with Bob Colbert. I'm your host, Bob Colbert. Hope you're having a great Saturday morning. Uh, this is March the 2nd. Can you believe how fast time is flying already in 2024? Uh, it's amazing. So we're coming up on spring, coming up on St. Patrick's Day. And so, yeah, the year is progressing. So uh, last week we talked about the Arch of Septimius Severus. I thought that it would be a little bit different presentation today. That was episode 16. Well, it turns out that episode 17 is pretty much on Arch of Septimius Severus as well. So what I'll, the difference is uh, th it goes into a little bit more details into the ornateness reliefs uh, that are on the Art. So let me go ahead and post that uh, on there, and I'll show you the arch in different lights and stuff. So let's see. So this is what we're talking about, the arch of Septimius Severus, and this is it during the daytime. And I'll show another wide-angle shot in the daytime. So we've already discussed this uh, Basilica Maxinius uh, to the right, and in the middle there is the Arch of Septimius Severus. And so, and then I also found a night shot of it. So let me put that up. So that would show you that. So there it is in the evening. So yeah, so today we're going to talk about uh, the reliefs uh, that are on the face of the arches and talk a little bit about that. Uh, before we uh, go there, let's go ahead and uh, review the video uh, so that you can get context uh, for the content of today's episode. I'll catch you on the other side. Accordingly, Geta's image and inscriptions referring to him were removed from the arch. The spandrels of the central arch are decorated by reliefs of the goddess Victoria carrying trophies. In the lower part of the four spandrels are personifications of the four seasons. The keystones of the central arch are adorned with images of Mars. On the two lateral arches the spandrels are decorated with fluvial deities and the keystones with deities that are unidentifiable due to the poor state of conservation. One might be Hercules. Just above the lateral arches, a narrow band of reliefs depicts triumphal processions. 
The bases for the eight detached columns are decorated with reliefs of Roman soldiers and Parthian prisoners. These reliefs are wonderfully preserved, maybe because they have been buried for much of their time since antiquity. The Arch of Titus is a first century AD. Alrighty. So let me. See that? So you can see me, my beauty. <laughs> so let me just uh, go back and talk about what the Arch of Septimius Severus, uh, what that's all about. And it's just a brief over, uh, go over. And here, it won't get too lengthy on this. So the Arch of Septimius Severus in Italian is Arco di Septimio Severo at the north western end of the Roman Forum is a white marble triumphal arch dedicated in the year 203 AD. It was to commemorate the Parthian victories of Emperor Septimius Severus and his two sons, Caracalla and Geta. In the two campaigns against the Parthians, of 194 to 195 and 197 to 199 AD. After the death of Emperor Septimius Severus, his sons, Caracalla and Geta, were initially joint emperors. However, Caracalla had Geta, his brother, assassinated in 212 AD in the practice what's known as uh, Dominatio Memoriae. Geta's memorials uh, that were strong about uh, the Rome, uh, <clears throat> the Roman memorials for Geta were destroyed, and all the images and mentions of him were removed from public buildings and monuments. Accordingly, Geta's image and inscriptions referring to him were also removed from the arch. The Severan dynasty were great builders of triumphal or honorary arches, especially in the Eastern Empire. The Arch of Septimius Severus in the emperor's hometown of Leptis Magna, Libya, was built in the same year. The monumental Arch of Palmyra is also sometimes called Arch of Septimius Severus. Okay, well, that's a little uh, brief description of it. Uh, let me go ahead and showed a little bit of map here so that you know where we're talking about. So on the lower right-hand circular area, that's the Colosseum. And then if you go a little northwest, uh, you will see that blue uh, thing. This is where the Arch of Septimius Severus is located uh, in the back. So, yeah, so... And you can see that right there in the wide angle. It's in way in the back there. All right. So the first uh, image, what we'll talk about is the in the front on top of the central arch, they have these spandrels right here, and I'll show that. And if you see let me get down there sorry about that hmm where is my oh there it is okay these were the goddess of victoria bringing the trophies or spoils of war there. So that's what you're seeing there. And in that central thing is a keystone uh, at the arch. Now, a lot of these are worn away, so they haven't been able to really identify what they were. And so, so, so yeah, you got that. And then <clears throat> this is, uh, let me see. This is called the capture of Sestephian 
the sorry, it's called the siege and capture of Sestephion, and it's marble, and it's four point nine zero by four meters. Yeah, and let me see if I can get a little bit of interpretation of it. Okay, I'll just go ahead and start reading the reliefs. Uh, that that'd be easier. Okay, let me get that. Yeah, I believe that's. Yeah, that's it. So, this relief panel depicts the events in the Edessa during the Parthian War. So, so relief, this is relief too. This scene has many interpretations. One interpretation of this panel is a scene of revolt at Edessa, an ally of Rome. Although the bottom section looks like a battle, it is said to be instead a surrender by King Abagris to the emperor who stands in front of the other Edessian figures relief, receiving their submission. Center section shows the king surrendering to the emperor. Another theory of this panel states that this scene shows an agreement made between the emperor Severus and the city of Hatra. Hatra. The way the emperor holds his spears down uh, downwards implies that there's a lack of uh, aggression on his behalf. The other figures not nailing contradicts the submissive theory. And then uh those uh winged uh was the winged victories of victoria on the spandrel of the arch that's what that was uh relief one relief one let me see if i can figure out what that one is uh Well, these are the plants. So these are these are called the reliefs on the plants, right there, and it shows uh, the soldiers uh, carrying prisoners away, right there. And let's see, spoundrels, the image, I saw that, got that, talked about that, release on spindles, yeah, and, and stuff. So I'll just read it. So throughout the arch, there are many reliefs. Near the spandrels of the arch entryway are, are the flying victorious, which we saw at the top. There, let me get those spandrels right there. So near the spandrels of the archway entry are flying victorious that mark the victory of the emperor. There are four statues underneath uh, the victorious that represent the four seasons. Prisoners of wars are shown on the pedestals nearest to the ground floor. So yeah, that would be that. Uh, Right there, but release on the spindles. Yeah, so those are prisoners of war that are shown on the pedestals nearest to the ground floor. <clears throat> Visitors walking through the arch would see these images and be reminded of the imperial victories of Septimius Severus. Some of these prisoners had gloomy faces and others had their hands behind their back while a Roman soldier stands behind them. The loot and booty taken by the Septimius Severus and his men are shown under the four main reliefs. The loot is being transported on a cart being pulled by large animals. The arch has four main reliefs 
that shows scenes of the Roman wars against the Parthian uh, Empire. Relief one, the Arch of Nibius, represents the siege of Nibisus from 195 AD in the first Parthian War. The knight who stands guarding the city gate is the knight whom Septimius Severus had to protect the city of uh, Nisibus after the war. Nisibus is also shown in the first panel. It is considered the cause of Abelia, an instigator of the war, to the first war against the Parthians. The small building towards the top of the panel <clears throat> top of the, the I lost uh Let's get her the, the, the small building toward the bottom of the panel represents the Roman camp that put up during the siege that was put up during the siege of Nabissus by Osrania and Adibini, who were defeated by Severus. The multitude of the figures represent the battle in which Severus was defeated Osrania and uh, Adibini in the first part, part of the war. Relief two. This scene has many interpretations. One interpretation of the panel is that it is the scene of the revolt of Exodus. Let me show that one. Let me get rid of that. So, yeah. <clears throat> So its interpretation of this panel was a scene of revolt of Estesis, an ally of Rome. Though the bottom looks like a battle, it was instead surrendered by King Abergus to the emperor who stand, was standing in front of the other Decian figures receiving their submission. And in Relief 3, this panel is on the capital side. We're, we're not, we don't have that picture. Uh, and is a relief of the second part of the campaign shown on the left of the relief are the Romans attacking the city of Cilicia. Figures fleeing on the left and right were Parthian soldiers, and the top of the relief showed the citizens who were surrendering to the Romans. And then we saw the relief on the right face, capital showing the Romans taking over Sebastian final battle. And that would have been. Uh, that. So let me go kind of getting a little deep on here. So let me go ahead and show Septimius Severus and a little bit more information about him. <clears throat> Uh, one moment. Sorry about that. Septimius Severus. Okay. So his name, his full name was uh, Lucius Septimius Severus, uh, born, uh, let's see. In the eleven, he start, his reign was. Uh, he was born uh, April eleven. Well, let me go down there. It's it'd be easier to read there. So his reign was April nine through one ninety three A.D. to February four to eleven. His predecessor was Didius Julianus, and his successors were his sons Caracalla and Geta. They were co-emperors, and remember, Caracalla had get assassinated in, I believe, 212. So uh, he was born in April 11, 145. He was born in Leptis Magna, Africa, Africana. He died <clears throat> February 4, 2011, I mean, 211, age 65, in Aboricum, Britain. Spouses were Pasia Marciana, married uh, 175, died 186 AD. And she was pretty young. What? 
Oh, that were that was how old they were. They were married from one seventy five, and then she died. Okay, and then she he also married Julia Domna, uh, one eighty seven. They had two uh, issues. Kara Callan Geta. Uh, his father. His father was named Publius Septimius Geta, and his mother was Fulvia Pia. Yeah, so that's uh, what he looked like. All right. So that's about all I have on that. So let me go back to the video again as a reinforcement, and I'll catch you on the other side. Accordingly, Geta's image and inscriptions referring to him were removed from the arch. The spandrels of the central arch are decorated by reliefs of the goddess Victoria carrying trophies. In the lower part of the four spandrels are personifications of the four seasons. The keystones of the central arch are adorned with images of Mars. On the two lateral arches the spandrels are decorated with fluvial deities and the keystones with deities that are unidentifiable due to the poor state of conservation. One might be Hercules. Just above the lateral arches, a narrow band of reliefs depicts triumphal processions. The bases for the eight detached columns are decorated with reliefs of Roman soldiers and Parthian prisoners. These reliefs are wonderfully preserved, maybe because they have been buried for much of their time since antiquity. The Arch of Titus is a first century AD. All right. So, uh, let me turn these off. And we'll, I'll put the night. So, whoops, put that one out. <clears throat> so, we talked uh, again about Septimius Severus, the arch of Septimius Severus. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I think next week is the uh, Arch of Titus. So, yeah, so we're get, we're approaching the end of this series. This is uh, 17 out of 20 episodes. So I'm working on the next uh, uh, set of videos that we'll uh, discuss. Not sure at the moment what they will entail, but, but I'm working on it. So if you'll catch me at 10 o'clock on the table talk, I said I wasn't going to get into the politics, so our country and stuff. I, I kind of made it a rule, but I've been watching the Fannie Willis or Piney Willis trial. I don't know whether you've been catching up with it. So <clears throat> anyway, it's very interesting. And uh, I thought I would discuss that, how it relates to our society and state of our judicial system. Don't really want to get into the connectivity of the politics. Uh, this is about uh, Donald Trump, and I think originally it was 19 co-conspirators uh, in there. So they were being tried under a RICO statute uh, on there for, I guess, inter election interference. So we're not talking about the election interference or any politics stuff. We're just talking about a particular case uh Finny Willis. Uh, the problem there was <clears throat> they're trying to get the district. She's the district attorney for Fulton County, Georgia. So they're trying to get her kicked off uh, as uh, as on this case uh, because she hired a special prosecutor, and that was troublesome. Uh, in the process that she did. Also, she was dating him, personally dating him, and that's a, an ethics violation. And and then there was the way there was some money exchange, so a lot, and gifts and trips and stuff like that, supposedly on taxpayer dollar. So anyway, I thought I'd talk about that a little bit. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so if you catch me at 10 o'clock on the Table Talk uh, podcast with Bob Colbert, I'm, of course, I'm the host there as well. So, 
Wherever you are on uh, this lovely Saturday, I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, it's right now, it's sunny, but I'm hearing that there's rain to come in in a little bit later this afternoon. So, so but wherever you are on this lovely planet, uh, y'all have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you later, friends. But I can't let it go so easily Until I see what it could be Could be eternity or just a week But you know I can't speak